see. And I'm recording. Go ahead, Doug. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Um, I uh, was going to check to see if all our commissioners were here first, so we'll do our attendance out of order. We, I heard Commissioner Wolf earlier. I believe I saw Commissioner Raymond. If you could just say here. Mark, you might have to unmute yourself to do that. Here. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Mead. Here. Commissioner Lyons. Here. Commissioner Zambrello. Here. Commissioner Miglis. Yes. And uh, Damien, are you here as well? I don't think I saw him earlier. All right, so at this point, I believe we're ready to start the meeting unless there's more announcements that need to take place uh, on Kim's part. Not for me, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Not a problem. Let me just go back to my announcement. Thanks for your patience. Um, Doug, before we get started, uh, sure. we do have one um, potential applicant here with an informal request. Given our late start and the fact that we have 12 applications, we may want to bump that out to the next meeting. I just want to let them know that if this ends up going very long, we may not get to that informal meeting at the end tonight if it's very late. That's a reasonable um, alert to place at this time. I would just note that um, if that person wishes to watch these proceedings, they'll certainly find this to be uh, a worthwhile endeavor, uh, even if we don't get uh, to their pre-application hearing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So at this point, I'll start with the announcement of the meeting for today. Good evening. And welcome to the May 26, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those who have not been here before, tonight's session is comprised of two parts, the public hearing and a public meeting. In the public hearing, which starts the event, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. We will get, this will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings at this time. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting, which follows all of the public hearings. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting that follows the public hearing, but need not do so. The results of tonight's public meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. And with this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Raymond, to read the legal notice. Thank you, Mark. Good evening. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, May 26, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application number 5003-20, Doug and Sally Sudell seeking to replace wooden gutters with aluminum gutters at 323 Main Street. Application number 5004-20, Vincent Federici seeking to install window decal from storefront business with gold and red vinyl lettering at 217 Main Street. 
Application number 5005-20, Adriana E. Sirisani, seeking to replace current wood front steps with wider wood steps add, and add a wood railing, add wood railings at nine, uh, 67 Knot Street. Application number 5006-20, Weston Crossu, uh, seeking to replace garage doors at Wayne, garage doors with Wayne Dalton 8300 model black garage doors at 209 Middletown Avenue. Application number 5007-20, Thomas Rhea, seeking to install a 16 foot by 32 foot black aluminum fence to surround in-ground pool and rear of yard at 360 Main Street. Application number 5008-20, Stephen Inglaterra, seeking to change previously approved application number 4728-18, to two barn style doors on south facing side of attached shed, remove stipulated window on opposite north facing side of attached shed at 147 Main Street. Application number 5009-20, Doug and Sally Sudell seeking to construct a 16 foot by 19 foot addition on the rear of the home using materials to match existing at 323 Main Street. Application number 5010-20, Dan Harrison seeking to rebuild existing porch with stairs, with timber, timber tech flooring, hardy plank siding on knee wall, five pond posts, and AZEC railings and trim at 21 Wilcox Street. Application number 5011-20, Robin Powers seeking to install a six six foot 10 inch wide by 12 foot long by seven foot two inch high polycarbonate greenhouse uh, in rear of yard at 352 Middletown Avenue. Application number 5012-20, Mark Wazalewski seeking to install wood picket fence in the side and rear yard to match existing moving his existing side yard fence back toward the rear of the yard at 408 Harford Avenue. Application number 5013-20, Wanda Hudson seeking to construct second, second story addition on the rear of the home over current first story addition using materials to match existing at 55 Center Street. Application number 5014-20, Douglas Martin is seeking to install a six foot wood stockade fence with diagonal lattice top on the left side of home at two Fenwood. They request a copy by contacting HDC, HDC comments at Weathersfield, Connecticut or weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by, by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent, to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, uh, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this 11th day of May, 2020. Anybody awake? Everybody still there? That was a long one. Yeah. Good job, Doug. Doug. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Doug, you there? Doug, you're on Doug, mute. you're on mute. Everyone's nervous. Doug, you're on Doug, you're mute. muted. I know. I'm not <laughs> sure how I keep getting back to mute, but I. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. 
Okay, so let's start with our role. I believe we have uh, five commissioners in attendance tonight. So our votes would be uh, with Ovian, Wolf, um, Raymond, Lyons, and me. And we also have two um, alternates here, and both alternates uh, may participate in tonight's meeting. Uh, but because we have five votes already, uh, the alternates uh, will not be able to vote this evening, but we encourage your participation in the meeting and welcome and thank you for being here tonight. Um, so let's start with application number 5003. And that is, if I could have just one second. That's Doug and Sally Sudell, the project, uh, gutter project at 323 Main Street. Is there uh, an applicant here uh, this evening? Yes, Doug and Sally Sudell are here. Great, and if you could just identify yourselves for the record and your home address if you're the homeowner. Yep, so I'm Sally Sudell, and this is my husband, Doug Sudell, and we just purchased the house at 323 Main Street in Weathersfield. Congratulations. Thank you. And so is there anything you want to tell us about the project in addition to the paperwork that you submitted? No, it's pretty straightforward. There are already um, is it aluminum, mm -hmm. aluminum uh, gutters on the rear of the house. And so this would be matching those gutters um, on the front of the house, taking down the, the wooden ones that are there. So noted. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions of any commissioners for these applicants? Question. Hearing none, I'm the, sorry. No, 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 there is a question. Uh, okay. the, the application gave us very pretty pictures of the gutter guards. And however, we didn't get to see the back of the house because I didn't want to trespass on the property. Question is, what style are the gutters? K style, half rounds, what? I believe they're case style, but um, I'm not 100% positive. It's actually the, the previous owner had uh, um, uh, submitted this application and uh, with hopes that this would be done uh, prior to us purchasing it. So um, I'm not 100% positive. Do they look like the wooden gutters on the back? There are, they're, they're, they're not wooden gutters on the back. In the rear, they're oh. aluminum. Okay, so it's hard to compare. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is Claire. Just to just to clarify, sorry, that um, what you'd like to put up is red, red gutters. To match it's, the yes, it's the same color. Yes. Matching the paint. Yeah. On the Very good. Thank you. This and is Chris, and I'm, I'm assuming that downspouts are also red. The gutters are red. The yes, reply on downspouts. Yep. They're existing, yeah. So it, it's it's just the replacing the 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 wood uh, gutter that was you know right below the. Yep. The, uh, but the downspouts are already aluminum. Already red. Yep. Not changing those. Thank you. And the first commissioner with a question was uh, Vasek Miklas. Just for the record, are there any other commissioners with questions for the applicants? Doug, it's Kim. Um, yes. I have I have the brochure in my hand, and it's a it's a leaf shedding system, so it has a mesh cover over the top of the gutter. Is it fair to say, Kim, that this is something that uh, wouldn't be visible from the ground, or is it uh, the type that um, doesn't sit directly it's, on top of the uh, gutter? It's smooth on the top. Is there a shadow line? Is it there a shadow flat. line? No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just again, to make the record for that. Okay. Is there any, are there any other questions of any other commissioners for the applicants or for Kim? Hearing none, I wanna thank the couple for coming in this evening. And uh, if you would like to sit through the meeting, you can, but you certainly don't have to if you wanna follow up with Kim tomorrow. Uh, they have a second application tonight. 
Um, Big one. Big one. Yes, that's a good point. Um, so sorry about that. <laughs> track of my addresses here. No so worries. at this at this point, I think this is not a back to back uh, circumstance though. Uh, the next one is uh, first I'll ask is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against the application for gutters? Hearing none, we'll move to application number 5004, which is uh, Vincent Frederici, the project at 20, 217 Main Street. Do we have an applicant with us tonight? This is Hi, yes, good evening. This is, this is Vincent Federici. Thank you, sir. And uh, could you please identify your business address, please? Sure, the business address is 217 Main Street. That's great. Is there anything that you want to tell us about your application in addition to what you provided uh, to our uh, Historic District Coordinator? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's going to go into that 78 inch window in the front. It is a gold leaf with uh, some red accents and it um, really is just reflective off a classic look. Uh, it is vinyl lettering, but it's actually gold leaf within the vinyl lettering, so it is of a high quality. Uh, it's durable, it's sustainable, and uh, it's by a company that has done work on other windows in that building uh, as far as storefronts are concerned. And yours is the one on the farthest left as you look at the building from the street? Correct, it's where Clip Salon was. It's the one on the furthest left. Great. Is, uh, are there any questions of any commissioners for Vincent? Hearing none, I uh, thank oh, you for sorry, joining sorry. us. I, I, sorry, it took me a second to get it off mute. Uh, this oh, is, sorry about that. This is Claire. I just want to clarify. Um, I think that it's clear in the application, the gray color is actually going to be clear. So all that, you'll, all that we will see is the circle and the decal, the little um, lettering, ribbon. That's correct, that's Very correct. Good. Just, I, I, I just wanted to clarify that for the record, thank you. Thank you thank for you. that, Claire. Mr. Federici, is there anything else you'd like to add at this point? No, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely, thank you for accommodating us by participating in the virtual meeting. At this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or move to awesome. application number 5005. Doug, can yes? you just back up? You just froze and I lost all, the ver all your audio. So if you could back up and start that section over again, please. Sure. Can you hear me now? I can. Yes. Perfect. So at this point, I will um, ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I will uh, thank Mr. Frederici for joining us this evening and uh, move to the next application on the agenda, application number 5005, the Sarasani application having to do with 67 Knott Street. Uh, front steps. Is there anyone here for that application this evening? Yep, I'm Adriana Sarasani at 67 Knott Street. Welcome. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about your project in addition to what you provided uh, to Kim? Uh, no, I think the pictures I tried to show just, um, I'm just widening the stairs a little bit so that I can put proper railings on there with spindles. Um, right now there's just a two by four like makeshift kind of railing that's on there. So I just want to make it look like the rest of the ones in the neighborhood. That's so the, great. Yeah, it's just going to be all wood, same materials and everything. So at this point then, I'll ask if there are any questions of any commissioners for this applicant. Question on Go the ahead, of the stairs. Uh, the application says that they're going to go to 59 inches. Uh, is that the yeah. entire width of the porch? Great. 
yeah, so that will yeah, so it's just going to match it's going to match the porch so that the uh, railings can connect to the front of the um, the posts that are there or the columns that are there. No, I think aesthetically that will be a, a win, definitely, all, all the way around. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Vasek. Is the, are there any other commissioners with questions for this applicant while she's still with us? Uh, I have one question. In the application, there's the picture of the staircase with the railings. Are those the exact railings that you're planning on using? No, it was just a, a visual. So they're just going to be wooden railings um, that I'll, I'll paint after to match the colors of the house. Okay, thank so you. Just, I'll just note that was Emily Zambrello, I believe. Uh, and um, thank you for the question and the answer. Any other questions for this applicant from the commission? Hearing none. Thanks for joining us this evening, Miss. And I um, invite you to stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. Uh, if you uh, don't have time to, you can uh, call Kim in the morning um, at the uh, number that was given earlier. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. You bet. Good luck with your project. So, at this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, we'll move to application number 5006, the project at 209 Middletown Avenue, garage door project. And uh, do we have an applicant available to speak to this this evening or a contractor? Yes, um, Weston Cross, who I uh, own 209 Middletown Ave. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Weston. Is there anything you wanted to tell us about your project in addition to the uh, information you provided to the coordinator for tonight's meeting? Um, not really. I mean, I just, the doors I have now are falling apart and rotting, and it'd just be nice to have garage doors that work. Um, the current ones are white and black. My house is white with black trim. I just think black, all black would look better than, because the garage is basically all white. And I mean, I tried to match the style as close as I could. And I guess that's about it. Thank you very much, sir. Are there questions of any of the commissioners for Weston at this time? I suppose I have a question, Vatsak here. Um, Thank you. The, have you considered going with no windows at the top? Uh, I your, did. Pres your present doors, presently, the windows occupy a relatively large proportion of the a garage door. And from what you've submitted, you end up with these little narrow slits at the top. Wouldn't it be better just to have a continuous thing rather than have windows that aren't really well supported visually as the existing ones are? Um, I guess, I don't know, I feel like that's personal taste. Well, for one, I'd like some light would get in even with the doors closed. Um, number two, like, I don't know, I just, from driving around, seeing other people's houses, I always feel like the ones with the windows look better. But I mean, that's just my personal preference, I guess. Um, I don't think that they're, well, I mean, the ones that are current, the current doors, yeah, you're, they take up quite a bit. You're right, like almost half the door. Um, uh, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like a solid, I feel like it adds a little something. I don't know. I mean, they're not as big, but they're not like, uh, I don't know. And with the light, like I said, um, I don't know. It, it does I guess that's. Yeah, it does add something, it adds a fair bit. However, uh, the ideal thing would be if you could find a three panel door, because you, what you're proposing is a four panel door, and the three panel yes. door would give you a window that is more proportional to what's there now. Uh, I found but one, that the problem was it was it was like uh, like six grand for like, like I don't know, the price difference is amazing. There are 
an amazing range of price differences in garage doors. <laughs> yes. I know I've been down that route. Um, but yeah, no, uh, that's why I'm not saying go to a three panel door. I'm just throwing out the idea of an all. There was one that I really liked, but uh, I don't know, it was just out of the price range. And um, I don't know, I mean, I figured, I don't know if I'll be living here forever, but I feel like it was a good. Uh, okay. What's the word I'm looking for? I think you may have found oh two that a square yes. shaped window um, instead of the more modern arched look that you've chosen might do a better job of replicating what's there in addition to Vasek's comments on a three panel instead of the four panel door, giving more light. I think there's and a lot of options out there. Um, well, originally I was looking at the four panel. I just thought that, I mean, granted, yes, the ones now are square, but with the carriage house look, I don't know. I, I um, well, again, I feel like the windows are kind of like subjective. Like some people might like them, some people might not, but um, I don't know, to me, it just seemed like it looked more like a barn door than rectangular. Cause like a lot of common doors just have plain rectangular windows. But um, well, we appreciate knowing what your personal preferences are, Weston. And at the same time, the last commissioner that spoke for the record, I believe, was Commissioner Wolf. And I believe that both Commissioner Wolf and Commissioner Miglas are making reference to the possibility that there are other products out there that um, would be both uh, price acceptable and perhaps um, be um more um in keeping with don't... what commissioners might be seeking for that door but we would like to know what you want and if there's anything more that you wish to say about it you're certainly welcome to or if there are any other commissioners that have questions for you they can be addressed now as well all right well this I mean, is chris no oh, sorry no go ahead sorry I, was Weston, go say, ahead, finish. I mean, I, I prefer the ones that I picked. Um, I mean, I could go square, but I don't really think that that has any like significance as far as like history or anything. Um, they, yes, the current ones were square, but is that really a detractor from, from the overall look? Like, um, I mean, I, if, if I have to, I'll go square. It's just, I just don't see exactly how like the shape of the window it's not like they're um i've seen ones that are like wavy and like weird um i mean it's <laughs> kind of like classic style i don't know i mean that's just like i said i think uh windows like the current ones yes they're square but um who knows when they were made like did they even have another option back then i just don't see how that's a deciding factor but um, Understood. Uh, there are some uh, reasons where it could come into play, uh, but knowing what your preference is at this point, I'm going to move to Chris Lyon, uh, office, I should say Commissioner Lyon, so that he can ask his question. Uh, just a comment. I, you know, my feelings in the past, I'm very happy to see the, the choice of windows uh, remaining in his garage door, unfortunately with the four panel right and with the arched corners it, it takes a little bit away from the light but I, I appreciate Weston's you know going and wants the light so many people are afraid of security and that's why they go with the four panels all solid but um, you know I, I appreciate the windows um, arched uh, is what he's asking for and uh, I've noted that that's it thank you thank you any other commissioners uh, wish to uh, address a question to Weston or make a comment at this time Hearing none, I thank you for joining us tonight, Weston. And I will ask if there's any member of the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, we'll move to application number 5007, Thomas Ray, the uh,
project at 360 Main Street screening for a swimming pool. And do we have a homeowner with us or a contractor? Homeowner, this is Tom Ray at 360 Main Street. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Is there Thank anything you. that you'd like to tell us about the project uh, in addition to the paperwork that you submitted to our coordinator? Uh, really, just in short, um, what we're looking to do is just get the um, fencing approved for an in-ground pool that we're looking to put in in the rear of the property. The fencing we're selecting is a very kind of common and standard black aluminum that you've or that we've kind of all seen around town here. So it's pretty standard and, and, and very popular. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking to go with. So something pretty simple and basic. So noted. Thank you. Are there any questions of any commissioners for the applicant? And if you could just identify yourself uh, first before asking. Thank you. Hearing none. Actually, I do have a, uh, I, I know where this is Chris Lyons. I, I know we're specific on the gates is circled. Uh, Tom, did you have what the actual fence? Because there's a couple examples. Which, which one or what pay, which fence, actual fence are you going with? Because you circled the gate. I see that. Yeah, and there's a corresponding, I think, um, model number that goes with that gate. So the reason why we selected that gate was um, the more the rounded top so that it could be identified as a gate along the fence, which is straight across. Um, but the actual fence, again, I, I have to double check. There, there's a corresponding. One looks like the um, gate. It has that second bar about four inches down. And in one example you give, there's no second uh, support rail. Okay, yeah, I, I, unfortunately I don't recall offhand. Um, I'd have to talk with the actual contractor, but there's a fence that goes with that gate. Um, I thought it was referenced on the material that I submitted, so I apologize if it wasn't there. Okay, yeah, because usually we, we vote, we say approved as submitted. If, if I just don't know which, unless another commissioner can identify which fence it is. The gate, the gate that's starred has the double row. Yes. So yeah. I imagine it's the fence that goes with that. And if if we approve it and it turns out to be the other one, they're very close. And um, at the distance that it will be at behind their house, I don't think that the extra bar is going to be a make or break. I see what you mean. I'm looking at the page. It's Kim. I think it's the one that I did this, I circled it and started it. And I, when I called him, I asked if he had a preference and I did not notice the bar at the bottom. So that is my error. It should be the gate that is underneath the one that is circled and starred. And I will make a note in the, in the file. That's my error. The page bef that you have before is the matching fence. The gate should be EDGF four five four two zero zero two A dash B K. It's okay. directly okay. below. Okay, that's perfect, Kim. Thank you. And Thank then, you so much, Kim. Yeah. Because we just want to okay. say we can approve as submitted with material, just so right. we know. The only other question I had is on the plot plan. There's a three by five equipment pad listed. Is that something new or something that's already there? Because that's not in our application. There's an existing, um, well, we have a patio back there and the equipment pad would go right next to the patio. So that would just be for the, any of the, the um, you know, filter or um, electrical parts that belong to the in-ground and that would be tucked away right behind the house as well. So that would go right next to the um, air conditioner condenser that we have back there. But you don't actually have the details of what that is yet because you don't have the pool specked out yet? Not exactly correct. Okay. Well, you can come back to us um, as an amendment so that there's no additional charge for that since you did draw it on the plot plan when you know better what it's going to be. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. Any other qu questions of any other commissioners? Yeah, I'm just questioning Jennifer's question on the equipment pad. Isn't that something that it could be well, made of concrete? It could be prefab piece or are you concerned about the filter and a heater potentially yeah it's whatever the equipment is actually that i'm curious about the pad we don't control it all i was just trying to 
clarify whether there was something going to be put on the pad that we weren't aware of, and there is, but they don't know what it is yet. So we'll get to that when the time comes. Oh, although I will just say- Just wanted to make sure it was clarified. Uh, so sounded like you were questioning the pad itself. Thank you. I, I will say if it's behind the house where the air conditioner is, I'm not sure it's gonna be visible from the street at that angle. But we, as Jen said, we can work on that when that comes, when they know what they're doing. And for the record, that was Commissioner Mead. Before that, Commissioner Lyons and uh, Commissioner Wolf. Great, everyone. Um, are there any other questions for these applicants while we have them with us? Applicants, thank you for joining us this evening. At this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, we'll move to application number 5008. Uh, that would be Stephen Inglaterra, the project at 147 Main Street. And Hello. Stephen, are you with us tonight? I am Stephen Ingleterra here, owner of 147 Main Street. Great. Thank you for joining us this evening. Is there anything you wanted to let us know about this application besides the paperwork that you submitted to Kim? I believe it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, I'm uh, open to answer them. So. Thank you. Are there any questions of any commissioners for Stephen at this time? Yes. Um, Jennifer Ball. So we spent um, a fair amount of time going over your first application when you came in to shorten that building. And we had asked you to move to preserve that window and put it on the north facing side towards Center Street. Um, and that was something that we were pretty specific about. What's the reason for the change? So the window, the, the window that was on the um, south side wall was not 24 by 36. The window that we were going to actually use, the window that we were going to actually use was a window that uh, we were going to repurpose that we had found in the basement. That was an old window they removed. Uh, upon uh, taking out those windows and those original shutters from the basement, uh, there was too much rot all around those windows. So we were unable to um use it but i have tried to source a window and i've been unsuccessful to source a double hung um you know used window that uh like uh the ones i have now with the single divided line going down um so i've been unsuccessful with that but i am open to putting that window there if I can source one. So if there's anyone that may know someone who has one, I would gladly put it there. Uh, this Thank is you. Commissioner Mead. There are lots of great sources for windows. I'm sure we can flood your email with lots of them. Um, when double hung windows are pretty easy to come by. Um, I have a question. Um, so these, yeah. these crisscross doors are going to be unfinished wood no, they will be painted to match the, we're at the home is being painted as we speak and it's going to be painted white to match the home. Okay. And Thank just you. to go back to the comment about the window, if I may, um, I've been able to find double hung windows, but these on this side of the home, um, the ones on the rear of the home are uh, solid pane. There's no di divided uh, grates. The ones on this side of the home have a, a single division going down the middle. And that's the, the issue. I haven't been able to find that particular window as the original diagram had shown. If, I, mm -hmm. if I'm able to put a window there that's just solid uh, glass with no um, you know, grates or lattice, I'm not sure what you call those, um, I, I would do that uh, immediately. But I just um, I can't source that type of window in that size. I've, I've called places down by the shoreline that we are big repurposing companies and, and I've tried them and I can't find anything. You may want well, to try Echo Building Supply in West Springfield. You may want to try some of the Habitat for Humanity restores. They seem to have great stuff. Um, gobs of stuff, of course, on Craigslist. I, I totally understand that, but I've tried. I even called the place in Middletown that was um, big and repurposing from what I understood and heard from someone. But this particular style window is 
is an issue. So if I could have the style window amended to not having that middle division, um, I can do that. I just, there's one, I'm not against the window. If there's that one thing that there is a glut of on the market, it is uh, wood stashes. There's also United Wrecking in Stanford. Um, you would find hundreds of windows there, but Claire's right about the Habitat Restore. Yeah. Okay have windows and um, I'm willing to bet yeah, I've seen windows. I, I'm I've willing seen to windows. bet that a couple of us on the commission have sashes that you could um, fashion a frame for uh, because we did stipulate that with great specificity in your last application and so we are going to yep. want to uh, see that done. I think okay. that I think that one of the issues here is uh, one of research um, and availability of a replacement. But I guess the other issue would be if there isn't a window uh, to go there, um, is, what's, is the blank wall appropriate? And I don't know if there are any commissioners that um, have any questions for the applicant having to do with that, uh, or if that's something to wait for the public meeting. But um, it sounds like you'd like a window if you had one, uh, but how do you feel about there not being a window there? So I'm fine with it staying the way it is because I have spent some time trying to find this window. And I, and I understand that there's many windows out there and I could go get a window tomorrow at Restore, but it doesn't match what's here. That's the, the issue. I, I can get one that has, you know. Well, um, again, my question today. here, my question here isn't about the window, but the lack yes. of one. And it is a fairly busy corner yeah. that has, um, and time has gone by. Um, and at least for this commissioner, uh, the necessity of there being a window there is, is something that we, can, uh, that we can look at as part of a modification. But we'd only want to do that if you don't want to have a window there. And it sounds like that's what the question is, even if you had a window available to you, would you rather not have one there? I, I'm not partial to having one or not. That's why after I spoke to Kim, I was um, okay with submitting it saying to leave the wall blank. Um, okay. And, you know, having, having that done that way was what me and Kim had spoken about. And I said, yeah, you know, it's, it's going to save me time. So I'm okay with it being blank. So I, I'm not partial to it either way. But again, keeping it blank would save my sanity on sourcing this window. Just okay. to reiterate, um, at least for this commissioner, that was something that we did spend a tremendous amount of time on on your last application. And so I think that we should stick with what our original approval was since you don't have any preference one way or the other. And I would say that um, the the difference between now and then is that there's also now a building right behind this structure. And um, to me, um, it's a little less busy with a blank wall there, but that's just this commissioner's first thought without having a, had a chance to speak with you all about it. Thank you, yeah. Commissioner Wolf. Are there any other commissioners that wish to interact with the applicant at this point? And Commissioner Mead, I'm thanking you as well. If there aren't any at this point, uh, thank you for joining us, Stephen. I'll ask if there's any member of the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, thank you for joining us, Stephen. And I will move to application number 5009, back to the Sudels, uh, their project at 323 Main Street. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. And let me get back to you. So uh, is there anything that you'd like to let us know in addition to the information that you provided uh, for tonight's uh, meeting document wise to camp? I, I, I think our the documents are pretty comprehensive. We're not uh, making any significant or any changes in terms of materials we're using the windows that are uh, in the home, we're, uh, we'll be using the same roof and continuing with wood siding. Um, uh, we're 
particularly excited about the addition. I, we do think it it per, perhaps looks like it it, um, it originally might have. It's a it's an improvement over what what we think is there now, and and um, and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Doug. Are there any questions of any commissioners for the Sedells at this time? Doug, question? Yes, thank you, Vatsik. Um, overall, I think that uh, addition is very sympathetic to the original house. Uh, one sort of question I have, and it's hard to tell from the line drawing, seeing as there's no siding included on the drawings, is on the right elevation of the building, uh, you've got the original uh, gable. And on the back side of the original gable, it comes down and sort of ends on the wall. And there's no visual support for that chunk of the roof. Obviously, structurally, there's plenty of support and all that. Just visually, there's nothing to hold it there. I was just wondering if some small detail, either a bump from the wall coming out a few inches or something to break that line could be incorporated into that wall to do two things. One is to give it a visual support and the second to break up that long wall. That's a great suggestion, Vatsik. I don't know if the homeowner's in a position to address it right now. Right, I, I'm struggling a little bit to visualize exactly what it is, um, what it is you're you're suggesting. Um, uh, we we do we do like the the design as it is, um, and feel like as you suggested, it's very sympathetic to to the original home, um, and and, uh, and is an improvement on uh, what was an addition some, uh, I believe, thirty or years ago. Okay, so in an effort to make maybe myself a little bit more clear, if nobody has an objection, I will share my screen, which is, uh, if I can find it here. That would be great, Vasek. I yeah. have no objection. Okay, I see the problem. At a regular meeting, we would uh, have exhibits. Uh, yeah, except now I got to find the thing. There we go. I found it. Great. Uh, so right here, I don't know if you can see my mouse going up and down. Yep. At the back, yep. at the back corner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right in there, that that point right there sort of looks like it's hanging in the air. But like no would a plaster would a plaster piece of trim be sufficient for you, or are you looking for something more than an interruption on the siding? I'm just looking for an interruption on the siding. A pilaster would do a just bringing six or eight inches of wall out two inches just to give it that visual break would make a big difference. Instead of basic draw a line where you're where you'd like to see that I, that's the existing where you currently have your arrow yeah, where, where are you pointing to yep let me get annotate see if I can figure this out there we go and except now we want to go from here There you go. Right there. There you go. Does that make sense to the applicant? That does or make sense. Just... One of the things that you could do is bring the uh, north side of the addition in six inches or so. Um, if you're looking for an actual difference in elevation. Uh, that I I suspect that won't work for the applicant because they're building on the existing structure. That's correct. Uh, that's right. Yeah, then I think we're talking about a trim piece here. Yeah, just a trim piece. A trim piece would do it. 
Yes, I, that's that's certainly something that we can we can manage. Yeah, I I, I thought so. Yeah. I mean, that's if you were wedded to uh, this long continuous wall and could make a strong argument for that long continuous wall, I'd love to hear it. But if it's something you haven't thought about, and giving that support to the to the roof would be, I think, a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. We're in, we're I think we're in agreement. Yeah. Okay. I will stop sharing my screen so that we can, oh, if I can figure out how, to, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Vasek, very much. Thank you uh, to the homeowners to being open to that suggestion. Are there any other commissioners with any other questions for the applicants? Chris here, I think that was very similar what Vasek's point was to a home we had on Howard Ave that we also asked them to do something very similar. Um, or to consider. We, you guys remember that uh, one? That I was, think you're... That was the Towdy uh, home, the old uh, Turcotte home on Howard Ave, yes. and they had a roof line, a gable end similar to that, and they were adding on in the front and to the back, and we asked them to kind of continue that roof line, that gable, that's very similar to Vasek's uh, recommendation. Chris, uh, you're right. This is not an uncommon issue that comes up in the district with our additions. Uh, and the uh, solution of the trim piece has uh, been employed uh, successfully quite a few times. I think it was a great suggestion here. Any other commissioners wishing to speak at this time or inquire of the applicant? Hearing none. Uh, applicants, uh, Sudels, thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, for two applications. And I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I will move at this point to application number 5010-5010. This is the application for the uh, porch reconstruction at 21 Wilcox Street. Welcoming uh, Dan Harrison if he is uh, joining us this evening. Hello, I'm Dan Harrison at 21 Wilcox Street. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining us this night. Is there anything you wanted to let us know in addition to the paperwork that you submitted to our coordinator? Um, rebuilding the front porch using Timber Tech flooring, um, choosing the uh, weathered teak color. I think that's the, the closest one to a uh, natural fur flooring that's uh, currently there. Um, I'd like to use uh, wood framing on the stairs in place of the uh, precast stone uh, steps that are there. Uh, wood framing with the same TimberTech flooring and white ASIC trim along with the uh, ASIC railings. So noted, sir. Are there any questions of any commissioners for this applicant at this time? Or any comments that any commissioners wish to make at this time? Yes, this is Commissioner Raymond. On the, the spindles that you'll be using, are they solid or are they hollow? I believe they are a hollow composite material. Hmm. We, I, I, Mark, I don't want to jump on your line. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to say more, you can. No, is there, would you be opposed to using a solid material as opposed to a hollow material? Uh, if I, I believe if I find a solid material, I would end up needing to paint that product. And the entire house is uh, maintenance-free products, and I wouldn't want to stop right there. Thank you for letting us know your preference, sir. Uh, you know, Kim and uh, the commission have dealt with the issue of these uh, ASIC port systems before. Um, I've heard. Kim, yes. And uh, there appear to be a variety of uh, finishes available on them. Uh, Kim, was there anything that you could let us know at this point about what you know of this application thus far and what we've run into in the past? Is this uh, an application? Um, a system that uh, would raise concerns for some of us or not? 
the same ASAC railing that we've seen before. So noted. Well, um, this commissioner appreciates the uh, um, retention of certain aspects of the uh, existing porch. Um, and uh, I just wanted to state that for the record. Uh, are there any other commissioners at this point that have questions for the applicant or wish to uh, comment at this time? Uh, Bots, I care. Two questions. Uh, so one, I think is, I'm not sure if the applicant can answer, uh, the, turned po the turned porch posts, it's a tough one. Uh, they are structural in design. Yes, because my, my thought of Fipon is usually a foam that is as a trim. And I wouldn't want to hold up my porch with a piece of foam. Fipon is the maker of this post, which is a foam with a steel round pipe on the inside of that, okay. making it structural to, I think it was 5,000 pounds. Yeah, okay, so structural, that's fine. I, okay. I wanted to make sure, but you know, hopefully the building department would have caught it if there wasn't, but uh, just to be sure. Uh, the question I have, the other question I have is, um, the knee wall is gonna be in, done in hardy plank, which is gonna match the existing house now? Correct. Okay, so same color and all that? Yes. Okay, uh, so the porch basically is gonna look very similar to what it does now, with the exception of having turned posts as opposed to the square ones? Correct. Or am I missing something? That is correct. Okay. And the stairs, obviously. And the stairs. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Vatsik. Any other commissioners with questions for the applicant? Hearing none. Uh, thank you for joining us again, sir, uh, for tonight's meeting. I do have and one question about the height of the existing knee wall. Sure, this is Mark Raymond. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> it's the applicant, Doug. The applicant, oh, Doug. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question about the height of the existing knee wall railing. Uh, it, it is not up to modern code. I'm gonna need a modification from the historic commission to go to the building department to continue that height of the knee wall. So That's noted. Uh, do you mean from us or from uh, the built uh, from some other uh, body? I believe I need a modification from you to the building department. Okay. Dan, uh, do you know the height that's required? I can find out, but it's Kim. Um, uh, do you know I believe modern, modern requirements are 39 inches and I'm at 30. Mr. Harrison, question. Do you know how far off the ground your porch floor is? I did not measure, but it is more than 30 inches. It is more than 30. That's too bad. <laughs> okay. Actually, I think it's like 32. There's four steps. <laughs> four times seven. Actually, if it's four steps, seven inches each, which is a good size step, you'll, you should be at 28 inches. Okay. I was assuming an eight inch step. Um, eight, eight, eight inch is a big step. Okay. Uh, you'd, you'd say, I really hate these stairs. You've had eight inch steps there. <laughs> um, one aesthetically pleasing way to solve the problem that you've just brought up though, is simply to put flower boxes that are screwed down to the porch railing to get you up to the height you need. I would not want to change the height of that wall. But if you have to. I appreciate the view from the porch. Understand. Oh, um, okay. I, yeah. So, yeah. I think I'm not sure if, if our word simply saying that you need a 30 inch railing will go far with the building department, but I'm not sure. Okay. 
Well, we can discuss this further during the public meeting, sir. It's good that you brought it up with us. Have you already discussed this aspect with Kim? So she is she was she aware of it before tonight so that uh, we can speak with her about it a bit? No, I did not mention that with okay. Kim. I did I did um, just offhand have a quick conversation with one of one of the inspectors and he had mentioned like modification from you guys. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I really appreciate your um, bring that forward at this time. And uh, Vasek, thank you for your contributions to the discussion thus far. Any other commissioners have any other questions at this time for the applicant or comments they wish to make? Hearing none, thank you for joining us tonight, sir. Thank You're you welcome to stay for the public meeting. Uh, probably encourage you to do so if you can. Um, I will say at this point, Doug, you lost your audio. You're on mute again. <laughs> Doug. Here we go. Hey. I think I'm back. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, thank you for joining us this evening, uh, Dan. And I'll ask at this point that we move to application number 5011-5011, Robin Powers, the Greenhouse Project at 352 Middletown Avenue. Do we have an applicant with us? Yes, hi, my name is Robin Powers and I'm at 352 Middletown Avenue. Welcome. Thank you very much. Sure. So uh, is there anything that you wanted to let us know in addition to the documents that were provided for tonight's meeting? Well, I hope I provided um, a detailed information about uh, the plan. Um, I would also like to say that um, the placement of the greenhouse um, uh, would not be seen from the street. And in keeping also with the historical look of the area, I have two adjacent um, beautiful farmhouses across the street from me, which have greenhouses. And, you know, that was how I got the, the idea to um, do extended farming, you know, earlier in the season and extended into the fall. So I, I, um, I'm looking at this Climapod um, uh, product, which was very highly rated on the internet. Um, and uh, it does come with a, a 10 year warranty. And um, it looks, uh, it, it has six millimeter polycarbonate windows. Um, it um, is stated on the internet that it is one of the, the most solid um, of the greenhouse um, kits that are on market. I'll be putting this in myself um, with um, a uh, two by four uh, footing and um, it ha has, you know, extensive directions and uh, um, I'm also able to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Is there Thank anyone from the commission that wishes to address a question to the applicant right now or make a comment? Uh, this is Claire. Um, as a gardener, I'm very jealous. It looks wonderful. I don't think you will be seeing it from uh, Middletown Avenue. Thank you for crossing your I's and dotting your T's, as we say, to bring it in. And, and good luck. It looks like fun. <laughs> Thank you very much. I agree with Claire. I want to come by and see it once it's up. Okay, great. Thank you so much, commissioners. Any other commissioners that wish to uh, ask a question at this point or make a comment? Hearing none, thank you for joining us this evening, applicant. And at this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, We'll move at this point uh, to the next application. That would be 5012 Mark Wazalewski, the project at uh, 408 Hartford Avenue, Bensing. Mark, are you with us tonight? Yes, I am. Along That's great, Kate. Mark. Yes. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Thank you for the documents you provided that outline uh, the fencing, new fencing location and the circumstances leading to this application. 
Yeah. Are there any questions of any commissioners at this point um, for the applicant? or any comments that any applicants wish to add? No, Doug, I do. we do have a letter to be read into the record if none of the commissioners have any questions. Then I, at this point, uh, do you have that letter? Uh, I, I can go back into my documents. No, I have it in front of me if you want me to read it in. Sure, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so it's dated May 18, 2020. Uh, addressed to Kim Wolf. I wanted to write to you about the following application 5012 20, Mark Wesluski, seeking to install wooden picket fence inside and rear yard to match existing, move existing side yard fence back towards rear yard at 408 Hartford Avenue. We live next door at 400 Hartford Avenue. We've spoken with Mark and Caitlin about their plans with the fence and we fully support it. Hope the meeting goes well tomorrow night and that you are staying healthy. Keep moving. Signed, Maggie Downey. And that would be the next door neighbor to the south. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wolf, for reading that. And in essence, uh, this is a fence that uh, continues on one plane in the same place where it was, uh, and in the other plane moves uh, closer to Hartford Avenue. That, that's correct. That's correct. That's great. Yeah. So at this point, since there weren't any other uh, questions of any other commissioners, and we had the public comment uh, that we did from this letter, uh, I'll just thank the applicants for coming in this evening and ask if there's anyone else from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application at this time. And uh, we're, if there's no one else, uh, then at this point, uh, I'm going to thank the applicants for coming in and uh, move to application number 5013. This is the addition at 55 Center Street. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. for joining us this night. So the application at 55 Center Street. Do we have an applicant here tonight? Yes, hi, my name's Wanda. Hudson and um, we're here also with David Hoople and Brad, our our builder, is here as well. Oh, let me turn my phone off because I'm on here twice. Um, anyway, so I'll defer to them to talk about details. Thank you for joining us, Wanda. Uh, you're the homeowner and you live at that address, 55 Center? No, we have um, permission from the Morissettes to discuss uh, building. Uh, we bought the house from them. Our closing date is June 5th. And um, they know they are fully aware and approve of the renovation proposal. Understand. So uh, you're not living there yet. Uh, could we just have your uh, home address, if you don't mind providing that to us? I presently live at 122 Bolter Road in Wethersfield. Just got married. Dave lives still at um, <laughs> 14 Riverside Road in Simsbury. And we'll be- And then um, we just need the business address for the contractor. Okay, Brad lives in Newington. Um, Brad. Well, if you're here, Brad, you can just give your business address. 47 Vivian Street, Newington. Thank you very much. He is so, on. Uh, he is on the phone. Is there a way to unmute him? I don't know if, uh, or a way that he can unmute on the phone. Let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. I think our um, moderator can do that. He may be self muted, which would mean he needs to uh, scroll down to the bottom of his page, touch the bottom of his screen, and it should pop up the mute unmute option. So we'll give him a chance to try to follow the prompts to do that. <clears throat> and at this point, I'll ask, um, I know that there were documents submitted uh, for this edition uh, at what 
was or still is at least officially the Morissette residence, but uh, may soon be yours as well. Uh, so is there anything that you wanted to let us know uh, as the two uh, uh, potential homeowners uh, at this point? Yeah, so um, the, addition, the addition is um, going um, above an addition that had been put on the house in 1981, just adding a second story to it. And it's to add a master bedroom suite. Um, the, uh, the design of the addition, the windows are, you know, for the most part, uh, going uh, along to match the, the original windows of the house, which are uh, six divided lights on the top and a single pane on the bottom of uh, double hung windows. Um, the siding on the existing addition is aluminum siding and it looks like clapboard siding, uh, whereas on the main part of the house, it is shingled siding. Um, we've had quite a bit of a discussion about what um, we should do with that. Um, we you know, obviously would match um, the second story with the first story, but you know, we had considered replacing the entire siding. So at first we thought about going with uh, shingles on the entire addition, but then we also talked about potentially clabbered siding to match what's there now. So I, you know, one of the things that we wanted to discuss with you was if there was um, any particular object objection to either choice and then the last thing, which is not necessarily reflected on, on the uh, drawing, but um, there on the back of the addition, um, there are three uh, double hung windows side by side. And we are considering bringing that out about two feet that would create on the inside of the house, it would create like a window seat inside. So that's, that's the one you know, other potential modification from what you have there. So, uh, with that, I uh, put it back to you to, you know, get your thoughts and, you know, questions. Thank you very much, David. At this point, I'll ask uh, any commissioner that has a question for the applicant or a comment they wish to make at this time to just identify themselves and proceed. Hearing, uh, well, I have a question then, if no one else does. Or Vasek, are you about to ask one? Yeah, I'm about ready to let loose. Okay, I figured I'd give somebody else a chance first this time around. I'll go after Doug then. Uh, uh, and so, like Vasico, go. Yeah. So yeah. let's step back to the siding. Uh, looking at the house today, I drove by, took pictures, uh, looked at it from all sides, and did find that <clears throat> the difference in siding between the shingles and the back of the addition looked a bit awkward. Uh, primarily because they went with a relatively wide clapboard, but not as wide as the shingle exposure. And it would be really nice and slick to see the horizontal lines of the shingles just continue into the back. And I think it would overall make a much more appropriate look for the addition than what's there now. Um, so yeah, I would highly support going with shingles on the entire prop. Uh, uh, project and more to the point is when you get when you start pricing the wide clapboards it's going to make your head spin anyway so uh, mm -hmm. there's you'll find that there's not a huge difference in price from redoing the verse the whole thing versus just uh, the second floor um, as far as the Window seat on the back, uh, basically it's not gonna be visible from any public way unless somebody can correct me on that. Uh, you see the two I also there. went and took pictures. I was told by um, Kim to make sure that if it was visible that we would have a detailed drawing of it. And I couldn't get an angle from the street. Yeah. Indeed, also on Garden Court, I went to Garden Court on the back of the house and, and um, there are bushes blocking the view so i thought that would be um you know a negative that it, it could be seen from the street yeah can't really yeah the, the sight lines between greenery blocking the view it's yeah. true sight lines between the houses are tight and the chances of seeing anything in the back are slim to none uh and i think furthermore seeing as what the applicants come in with is a very sympathetic uh addition i don't see the window seat being glaringly out of keeping with the rest of it. I have a question. 
If we did do that bump out all the way across though, does that make a difference if we chose to do it from end to end instead of just um, within, you know, on the window area itself? Um, it wouldn't make much of a difference in sight from the street at all either. Except at that, would, point, at that point, you would see the sides of it. It would create the look of a garrison colonial on the rear, I think, is what you're saying. If you extend the second, is the second floor where the additional, or where the window seat's going to be, or the first? Second floor. And the master then, bedroom, that right. would be I think that the look would be, I mean, the, the most attractive way to look at that overhang on the back might be as a reverse garrison, but uh, that's just a thought. Now what's a, a garrison versus a reverse garrison? What's the difference? Well, a, a garrison colonial typically is a house that has the front overhang of the second floor about a foot uh, over the first floor. And uh, it's a colonial style that is not uncommon either from way back uh, from original homes or from revival constructions. Um, but I think Vlasic is right. You, you would see it at that point. And I guess the question becomes uh, if that uh, would be objectionable at all. So uh, uh, one of the, uh, those are, that's one of the things that we could discuss uh, during the public meeting, knowing that uh, this is something you're interested in. Uh, Vasek, is there more you want to say about that now before I go to Chris? Yeah, the, the only thing I would say is I think this seems to be an idea that hasn't been thoroughly thought out yet. And I think if we can probably rule on the addition as it stands now, and if the applicant feels, ends up wanting uh, something that is visible from the street, then certainly we could probably deal with it as an amendment with well, drawings and all the other stuff that would go along with that. Sure. At this point, I'll ask Commissioner Lyons if he'd like to say something because uh, Commissioner Miglas already addressed the siding uh, uh, suggestion I was going to make. Uh, mine, mine as well, but I do have a question on the rear um, of the home where they're showing, um, you know, the existing three windows with the awning style and below, the fixed above, and then the three, and it, whether they go with the bump out or not uh, would be pretty cool. But it looks like they're moving to, if you face the rear of the home, the window on the second floor to the right, you're just sliding that closer to the edge of the home. That's correct. Yeah. And then, but the one below that, you know, the actual photo, I mean, those are, you know, they're, they're kitchen windows. You, you show a double hung six over one, but those are, are not. Are you keeping those exactly where they are or what's happening to those? Not that there's in, in that porch, is that going to be shortened or what's happening? I know the, the illustrations aren't completely down to scale, but. Yeah, let me. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, I just got to get the photo on the, the house. It's the driveway side. Those are two crank out windows. And then you have the three on the driveway side by the basement door. Yeah, I mean, we hadn't planned on changing that. We were just going to leave those as is. So, so that's as is. So the footprint, you're really basically coming up from the addition. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we, we're not going any Thank longer. Except well, I, I just had some neighbors that. asking about that. And then, of course, some of the concerns, what was the massing, you know, now you're going, most of the additions on Center Street and Woodland Street and, and all the others are the one story similar to this. This is a little bit different roof line, but uh, they were just asking. So uh, that's why I'm kind of in favor of the, uh, the shakes as well. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. There are, uh, I guess there is a two story addition at 66, roughly across the street, uh, Chris, and. Uh, increasingly, we see more and more of these as people decide to. Yeah, these are the neighbors, Doug, that asked me uh, that we're within four to five houses, right? There, there definitely are. Yes. No, I, I agree. There's a mix of one and two story. Um, 
And when we go to two story, of course, it becomes more visible from the street. So massing is certainly uh, a discussion point. Uh, are there any other commissioners that have questions for the applicant at this applicants at this time uh, or for their builder if uh, he was able to dial in? All right, uh, hearing none, I want to thank the applicants for working with Kim, our uh, historic district coordinator, up until this point and maybe going forward. Uh, we welcome you to stay for the discussion at public meeting. Um, and uh, if you don't get a chance to do that, you can follow up with Kim tomorrow. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, thanks uh, for everyone for joining us tonight. And we'll move to the last application on our agenda this evening. And that would be uh, the fence project at 2 Fernwood Street, another Douglas, Mr. Martin. Hi there, can you hear me? Welcome, yes we can. Oh super. So is there anything you wanted to let us know about your application uh, in addition to the documents, information provided in the documents you submitted to us? Um, no, I don't think so. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the application that we had, it's just a small fence um, using uh, the same um, company that worked with our neighbor to do theirs so he was familiar with the uh the style that you folks um are okay with and, and this uh, is the i'm sorry is this the first house on the right uh behind the yellow house that faces yes Hanmer school thank you that's right just wanted to confirm i went up and down that street today uh one of my favorite spots i just want uh, to there... clarify um the, the space where the gate is, is there a gate or is it just an open space to pass through? No, it's going to be a gate. Okay. There'll be an eight foot length and then the gate and then another eight foot length. And then um, an adjacent eight foot length to go towards the side of the house. That uh, I can understand the reason for Commissioner Wolf's question. I believe that was Commissioner Wolf, uh, because the uh, uh, marking uh, could be interpreted either way. What's the gate going to look like? It is going to look like what um, Hartford Fence has sent along. I'm not sure if you folks had gotten. Uh, um, I'm actually looking at, I'm looking at what was attached to the application and it shows us a length of the fence with the lattice top, but it doesn't show us any gate. Is it the same as the rest of the fencing or is it yeah. shorter? Yeah. That's, that's a great question. Um, I, yeah, it's, it is the same style as the rest of the fencing. Yeah. Okay. It's just going to have a separation in it with the hinges and the just a regular it looks it looks the same it's just four feet wide instead of eight feet wide right okay that's great thank you sure if for thank some you. reason if for some reason uh you find that there's more of a difference than that uh just please come back to kim to let her know okay so that we can address that sure are there any questions of any other commissioners for doug hearing none Thank you very much for joining us this evening, sir. And I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I uh, will entertain a motion to close uh, the public hearing on all the aforementioned items and open the public meeting on all of them. So moved. And name please. Was That's that Chris, correct? I'm sorry, yep. Thank you, that's fine. If you could just identify yourselves. Is there a second? I'll make the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The public hearing is closed and the public meeting is open. So, beginning with Application number 5003, uh, the Sudell uh, gutter project. Is there anyone that wishes to make a motion? 
move to approve with the stipulation that the gutters be case style painted to match the downspout and house. Is there a second? Second. And that's from Chris? Yeah, sorry again. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you. So, uh, discussion. Uh, the discussion that I would uh, offer at this point is that a case style gutter is uh, a, an appropriate uh, addition to a building that's having the substitution that's taking place here. Uh, it's a classical kind of uh, gutter top. Um, and it also um, serves a, a imitation molding purpose uh, at the top of the siding. Uh, and the color uh, helps it get lost uh, and coordinate with the uh, existing building. Are there any other questions of, I'm sorry, are there any other comments that any other commissioners wish to make at this point regarding this motion? Ben, can you repeat the stipulation, please? Uh, my stipulation was that the gutters be K-style, painted to match the downspout and the house. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Jennifer. At this point, I'll call the vote, unless there's uh, any further comment. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed, please identify yourselves. Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulation. Moving to application number 5004, Vincent Federici. That's the uh, sign project uh, in the business block on Main Street. Is there a motion? This is Chris. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Chris, and the second is Jennifer Wolf. Any discussion? Um, I'll just offer this is uh, an appropriate uh, signage system that has worked uh, in other units in that same building. It has a minimal impact on the district while at the same time providing eye level uh, identification that helps uh, and is visible actually from both cars uh, and pedestrians. Uh, but it doesn't have a, a strong permanent impact on the building. And so that's a nice uh, feature. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak for, uh, say something about this motion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, please identify yourselves. Hearing none. The motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Moving to application number 5005. This is the uh, stoop project, so to speak, on Knott Street. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Is that I'll Mark second. Raymond? That is. Thank you. I'll, I'll second Mead. Thank you. That's clear. So, it seems to be one that's very uh, inspired by the uh, feeling of what's there already, um, but it's expanding uh, to accommodate uh, railings. Um, are there any other commissioners that wish to speak to this at this time? Sure. Botsak here. Uh, yes, Bob. I think basically the applicant has come in with a very appropriate uh, change, probably one that was originally built as designed. Uh, I find it very hard to believe that the original stairs were built that narrow. Um, yeah, very appropriate change and good luck with the project. Thank you for your comments, Vasek. Hearing no one else at this point, I will, uh, unless someone wishes to say something, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay, please, and identify yourselves. Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5006, Weston's project, the garage doors at 209 Middletown Avenue. Chris Lyons, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. 
Thank you, Chris. Is there a second? No. I'll make a second for the purposes of discussion. Chris, uh, why don't you let us know uh, why you favor uh, an approval here? In, earlier in the meeting, I, I did indicate that I, I am a fan of at least one of the panels uh, showing glass. A lot of people have opted out for security uh, reasons, but while it's not ideal, I think it's appropriate uh, for that structure. Are there any commissioners that are uncomfortable with this motion? Um, I was actually going to move to table so that the applicant would have a little bit of time to look at some additional products, maybe with some other contractors. I think maybe the problem is that the, um, it, and I don't know that this is, it would happen, but perhaps what this particular contractor had to offer didn't give a broad enough range of, pro, of styles. I agree with Vasek that uh, three vertical panels instead of four would probably look better with or without the glass, frankly. Um, and I think that the curved lighting at the top reads very, a very modern look that doesn't really mesh with the house. Um, you know, I think this is probably not one of the cases where we're trying to preserve legitimate carriage style doors on a particular structure. Um, but I think that there's still a garage door that would be a better blend with the house and the garage itself. This is Commissioner Raymond, where I agree with uh, Commissioner Lyons that I'd like to see windows in garage doors. I really do. Um, I, I don't agree that uh, the, the curved windows are an appropriate fit for this, this specific application. This is Commissioner Lyons again. So I have, uh, back to uh, Mark and to uh, Commissioner Wolf's, uh, I have no trouble tabling this, removing my motion, because um, e even with this vendor, it seemed like there were more appropriate window choices, but I'm just going based on what the uh, applicant uh, preferred. Uh, so I have no problem, Doug, you'd have to remove yours. I, I could change mine to uh, table. I have no uh problem. I, I will just say for, for my purposes, uh, if this door were in white, I would have a very different approach uh, or feeling about it than I do in this black color. For some reason, this black color seems to soften the curves and, and the curves almost look retro to me um, like they might work here. So I surprisingly, um, found and this is part of the reason I seconded it was not just for discussion is because uh, uh, I'm open to it but I, I certainly think that when you consider the doors are going to be up there forever if there's some discomfort by commissioners uh, having this matter table at least once is not too too much to ask of uh, everyone involved uh, are there any other commissioners that wish to speak at this time yeah uh, Batsik here Yes, Vasek. I, I think if the applicant could turn to his contractor and see if a three panel door is available, uh, I think both reflecting on what you just said, Doug, and what the other commissioner said is the curved windows could work if they were taller. Uh, it, would, it would make several changes. One of the uh, significant changes that would make is the windows would become more vertical, or they should at least if they keep the number of panes the same. Um, and I know when I was researching garage doors, I found that the, the difference in price between a four panel door and a three panel door was sure, we can do it, no problem. Uh, he may be limited by the style of door that he picked, but uh, I suspect that there will be other things in a three panel door that will not break his bank. Thank you for that comment, Vasek. Are there any other comments uh, that any other commissioners wish to make at this point? Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is Emily. I agree with Vasek about that. I do prefer the square windows personally, but I also feel like I would be more inclined to approve the arched windows if they were a little larger vertically. I think they they look a little too squat 
right now for what they are, especially when you compare them to the current door. Um, so I agree with Fasik that if he, the applicant could find a three panel door with the same windows, I think it would be better suited to what's there. Thank you very much, Emily, uh, for that comment. Um, as I said a moment ago, again, this kind of uh, is not, uh, is, is somewhat surprising from myself in terms of my uh, willingness to consider the arch. I, as I said before, I guess it's because the door is so dark. Um, it's not hitting me the same way it would if it were light. And you're right. I think if there were more glass there, it would certainly be more consistent with what's there right now. In any event, any other commissioners? This is Commissioner Lyons. If no one else has anything else to say, I'd just like to add, I, I have nightmares going back to the applicant on Megat Park that was similar <laughs> type doors that we, for six weeks, we, we did not approve even a solid door. So, so I'm just, I just don't want to go down that road again on this applicant for the record. So noted, Chris. At this point, I should, uh, since you suggested that you would withdraw your uh, first and uh, make it a table, uh, if I haven't formally withdrawn my second, uh, I will do so and I will second a tabling motion. So, uh, right. because I think that's where we are right now. So I, I change my motion to make a motion to table this applicant application. Thank you, and I second it. Any other commissioners wish to comment at this time? We appreciate the patience of the homeowner. I uh, believe that this will be a uh, fruitful uh, continuance. Uh, and we are meeting again, I believe, just two weeks from now, or is this a three week? I think it's just a two week gap. Two week. That's great. Thank you, Kim. So all those in favor say aye. 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 If any are opposed, please say nay and identify yourself. Thank you. Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is tabled. Application number, pardon me, just have to get back to my uh, document. Sorry about that. I think we're on 5004. Uh, let's just confirm that. No, no. We're farther out. Number five, 507. Yes, 5007, 360 Main Street. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. This is Lyons. Make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Jennifer Wolf. Thank you, Jennifer. Any discussion? Actually, Jen, do we need to stipulate that pad or, or they'll come no, back? They didn't, it just is the pad that's spelled out, which we wouldn't regulate just right. as okay. the cement pad. They didn't actually ask for anything on it. Um, Thank I you. think they can do it as an amendment though, if they need to in the future. Thank that you. makes sense. Are there any other commissioners that wish to comment on this application before we call the vote? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor of approving as submitted, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay and identify yourselves. Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5008, I believe. Sorry, let me get back to that. Thank you for your patience. Sorry about that, here we go. Application number 5008, is there a motion? For discussion, this is Lyons, then I'll, I'll make a motion to approve with the following stipulations that the uh, stipulated window on the north side uh, still be part of the previous application, if that makes sense. I'll second. Okay. Um, 
I guess I would, I'll second it. I would work, I guess I would word it um, with the window to be maintained as previously approved. Yep, thank you. So just to be official here, uh, if I didn't say enough before, application number 5008, this would be the project at 147 Main Street. Uh, as I indicated earlier, uh, we have a, uh, well, before that, we have a first and a second, I believe on the motion here. Uh, I've, as I said earlier, now that we have another building in play, um, I kind of have grown used to the uh, wall as it is and, and don't feel the absence of fenestration there that uh, originally I felt the property needed so that for my sake at least, I could live with that wall blank. Commissioner Lyons here, ask a question. So the applicant has a year to complete the installation of that window, which was a stipulation to remove eight feet of that existing L. So a year comes up, the window doesn't go in. What, what happens? Can't add the feet because now you have a new property there. I mean, like demolition by neglect, what happens to this? Similar, if, if we don't, the window doesn't go in, you can't find one. Well, I think he'd be the subject of an enforcement action, okay. um, you know, through the town. But I don't think that there is any possibility that that cannot be replaced. Yes, I, I would agree with the notion that this is a findable window of some type. I mean, a two over two window to match the others uh, is, is, is to me uh, a, a doable task. That's why I said for me, the issue is there's so much more going on on that corner than there was originally uh, that a plain wall is something that I don't, uh, that, I, that I find preferable actually to a windowed wall. And I realized that as commissioners, we voted for that uh, reduction in the L uh, with that stipulation, and I'm uh, not trying to be disrespectful of that. I'm just trying to be conscious of the fact that there's so much more going on in that backyard than there was at the time of the original vote. Uh, I don't know if any other commissioner feels that way or not. This is Commissioner Mead. I, I think we have to take this house on its own. Um, I think we need to take the back wall on its own and not say simply because something else has come in in the interim it's different the the i was not part of the original vote um, on this addition i'm assuming that the reason for the window was to keep some of the original uh intent of that structure That's um, true. so so the fact that the corner looks different to me doesn't have any bearing on that decision Point taken. Is there, uh, are there any other commissioners that uh, wish to speak to that specific issue or just the application in general? Uh, this is Commissioner Raymond. I would just uh, say that I agree. I agree with uh, Commissioner Meade's point. I thought it was well said. Thank you. Uh, first Commissioner Meade and uh, now Commissioner Raymond. Any others? I think some, this is Commissioner Lyons. I, I think since the initial, that was gonna be incorporated into interior living space, we're somewhat joining uh, walkthrough from the interior of the home. And, you know, obviously now with the barn doors and the evolution of this, it's gonna be back to the storage shed it was. That could possibly be an argument for no window there, but I still believe we, we talk about, you know, the mat, you know, the length of that wall there even though it's now 12 feet as opposed to the, the 20 feet you know that that window is close enough uh, or you know to the uh, main body of the house that it's away from what you're talking about the additions to the corner in my opinion so noted chris any other commissioners wish to comment at this time hearing none i'll call the vote all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, any opposed uh, say nay and identify yourselves. Nay, this is Doug. And uh, the means the motion carries. 
and the uh, application, I'm sorry, uh, and the modification uh, is denied. Application number 5009, this would be returning to 323 Main Street, the addition project. Is there a motion? Doug, I'm sorry, can we go back to that previous? application. Yeah, it's not denied. It wasn't no, it denied. wasn't denied. It was approved with a stipulation. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, let's return to application number 5008. The, uh, let's just review again. Uh, the motion was made by which commissioner? Commissioner Lyons made a motion with stipulation that the uh, barn doors uh, would be approved as submitted in that we are um, Jennifer, help me out here again. What you said uh, about you know the adhering to the original uh, application window, window. Yep. as previously approved. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I misstated that, folks. Uh, that is true. Uh, this is uh, kind of a hybrid application, and so the application uh, was uh, approved. Um, in full or in part? I'm just taking a look here. With the stipulation. Yes, with the stipulation. Thank you very much. So at this point, unless there's any further question about the record for application number 5008, we'll move to 5009. And that would be the Sudell House at 323 Main Street. Is there a motion? I will make a motion to approve as submitted with the stipulation that there be a trim piece interrupting the siding on the north side of the home. I'll second it. Commissioner Any discussion? That, oh, the second was Mark Raymond. Thank you, Mark. You identified yourself, I believe. Any discussion by any counselors? Uh, commissioners, pardon me. Hearing none. Okay. Uh, well, I, why don't we? I, I will add a little bit more, uh, which is that um, we already addressed this uh, project, uh, our one one project having to do with this house, uh, which is much less impact on the district in the sense that it's just a gutter. This is an addition, but it's notable that this house is set back from the street. The sidewalk uh, is relatively close to the house, but the lot is deep, especially deep, and uh, can certainly accommodate uh, the rear addition uh, without uh, having the front of the building facing the street losing any prominence, uh, even though some of this will be visible uh, with the addition of the second story on the um, uh, viewable from the north uh, and uh, from the south as well. So, is there anyone else that wishes to speak for or against this application? Doug, or I should say Kim. this motion. Doug, it's Kim. Um, your stipulation said that the trim piece is added to the north side of the home. Can you be more specific so that I can word sure. that correctly, please? Uh, to create a, to create a um, faux Doug. May oh, I? trying to get your attention. May I? Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead, Vatsik. There shall be a trim, a vertical trim piece directly below the eaves at the back side of the existing house. Thank you, Vatsik. Any other of uh, that uh, stipulation? Who was my second? It was Mark Raymond, was it not? Yes. yes. Thank you. Mark, is that all right with you? Yes. Thank you. So at this point, unless there are any other comments of any other commissioners, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm going to- nay, And please identify yourselves. Uh, Doug, it's Jennifer Wolf. I'm going to abstain. I had to step away for a moment and I missed part of the discussion. And so I'm going to abstain from the vote. Understood. Thank, Thank you. you for making the record, Jennifer. That means that the uh, 
application, I'm sorry, the motion carried and the application is approved with stipulation. Moving to application number 5010, Dan Harrison. That's the uh, porch project on Wilcox Street. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll uh, make a motion, this is Commissioner Raymond. Good. Make a Thank motion. you, Commissioner Raymond. I'll make a motion to table. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second your motion for the purposes of discussion, uh, Mark. Uh, although I will say that I would have been inclined to uh, stipulate the, uh, make the stipulation that the homeowner was looking for, but am I correct in thinking that you think we need to look into this a bit more before we speak to it? Yes, uh, the materials that are being used, I've, I've, I've seen them um, in the district and we've, we've had lengthy discussions um, with the coordinator and commissioners and I, I just I, I don't think I think there, there should be uh, an opportunity to look at um, different materials for for the porch. Understood. Are there any other commissioners that wish to speak at this time? I, I'm just curious uh, Mark which materials do you have problems with? The railings, but, the floor, the, the yeah, the, the hollow, the hollow pieces, the you know, the hollow ASIC for, um, material for the, um, the the spindles okay. and the railing. I think that this raises one of the problems um, presented with this format for our meetings. Is this is an application that we surely would have requested a sample for everyone to look at? We would have handed it around at the meeting and had a better idea of what it actually looked like. Unfortunately, some of the, um, the brand names or the phrases we've used to mean certain things don't mean the same things that, that they used to. ASIC used to be a, a solid composite material that looked and replicated wood in a very good fashion. And even the FIPON, as you stated, Vasek, was something that we saw being carefully molded and then painted, but we didn't think of it as a structural item. Um, so the fact that both of these things now we're told that FIPON is structural and that the ASIC is now essentially a metal and a wrap, those are things that I would want to see in person. I think what we could do maybe is ask the um, homeowner to provide samples to Kim and those of us that want to see it, she could have it on her front porch and we could drive by and take a quick peek at it. I know I would want to see it. I hate to belabor this for the homeowner, um, but you know we did have him before us before, and I really do want to get it right for him and for for the neighborhood. Understood, uh, Jennifer, um, Commissioner Wolf. Um, this is a, a difficult situation because the products are so different from what we're used to by the name. Um, so uh, a tabling although uh, uh, painful to a certain extent for the homeowner, I'm sure, is uh, really of some necessity uh, in this case, unless there's a, a comfort level overall with uh, what's proposed, uh, especially in that railing system. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak at this point? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. This is a motion to table. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say so and identify yourself. Hearing none, uh, the, the motion carries and the application is tabled. Application number 5011, uh, the greenhouse on Middletown Avenue. Is I'll there a motion? A, I'll make a motion to approve. As submitted. Very appropriate. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. So the motion was made by Mead and seconded by Wolf. Discussion? You know, as we discussed earlier, um, it's not, there's going to be very little visual impact from the street. Thank you uh, very much, Claire. Uh, it's also part of the town's agricultural 
it gives a nod to its agricultural roots and present, past and present, and hopefully future. Mm. Uh, so I will call the vote unless any other commissioner wishes to comment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5012, Mark Wazalewski. This is the fence project on Hartford Avenue. Mark's um, project. Uh, Doug, hi, this is uh, Claire. I'm gonna recuse myself from this application. So noted, Claire. Thank you for uh, noting that. That I believe that does open uh, a vote for uh, an alternate at this point. Um, it's Emily. Any commissioner have uh, an issue with that? Then no. at this point, uh, I will ask uh, which commissioner last had the opportunity uh, to vote and get make way for the other uh, alternate to vote. It's, it's Emily's. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, Vatsik. So, having heard all that, um, we at this point we need a motion. Uh, is there someone that wishes to make a motion? There's Lyons here. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Thank you very much, Chris. Is there a second? A second, Jennifer Wolf. Thank you, Jennifer. Discussion? Uh, I think this was a well-documented application. Uh, they're taking advantage of uh, a necessity uh, to uh, make a mild relocation. Um, and given the depth of the property uh, and um, the uh, location of the and style of the fencing, I believe that the impact on the district uh, will be minimal uh, because of the relocation and it continues to help to nicely frame the property. Any other applicant, I'm sorry, any, any other commissioners wish to speak to this application and the motion? Hearing none, I will call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 And uh, are there any nays? And please identify yourself. Hearing none, I believe we had uh, four eyes from the regular commissioners plus uh, Emily Zambrello, our alternate voting on this. Thank you, Emily. Yep. Application number 5013, Wanda Hobson, Hodson, pardon me, the project at uh, 55 Center Street, uh, the addition. Is there anyone that wishes to make an application, uh, a motion, pardon me? I will uh, move to approve as submitted with a stipulation that uh, the entire, I'm sorry, that the entire edition be uh, uh, cited in wood shingles to match the, uh, to match the courses on the original home. Is there uh, a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mark, at least for the purposes of discussion. First of all, uh, is there any feeling that there need to be additional stipulations besides the one that I made? Uh, yes, uh, Chris Lyons here. I, I believe uh, the, the applicant said to match the existing original. I, I, knowing, and Kim had researched this for us, those windows were replaced in, in a, in a uh, man-made product. I believe they're Harvey Majesty windows that are currently uh, there. I think they're yeah. 400s. They are Anderson 400s. So that means it's a painted window. Not not a not a Harvey Majesty pre uh, fab color. Um, I'm do I'm going to double check the email on that. There is no record of the original window that put was put in in the in the street file. It was listed as replacement window with no brand given. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I thought, knowing the applicants and, and living around the corner, that they were, you know, a DBL, Harry Majesty, uh, but I could be wrong. So th that would be the only question. Well, to that point then, Chris, would you prefer that the windows in the addition match the windows in the house, or are you uh, 
Does that kind of take six over? I mean, the, the applicant mentioned six over ones. I, I don't know if we clarified uh, what that, you know, those kitchen windows were, were not going to be changed. They were drawn in as a six over one. They're, that's not existing. But that, I don't even know if those can be seen, considered seen. Uh, you know, they're not changing the driveway side, but you know, even if they were to change that window uh, existing to that porch, you can't, I don't believe you can see it. Um, yeah, my, my just would like to have that clarified. But the stipulation you, can't isn't just matching light pattern. It's potentially. Do you have a preference for the window to be the same exact window that's in the uh, original house, or are you looking for a change? The, the only concern is 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 that obviously we stipulate a man-made color. If, uh, if it's Harvey, they can paint it to match. Or uh, Anderson 400. No, I'm I'm not married to. Um, to whatever they're, yeah, they're going I'm to buy. The application material in the last page, 13 of 13, is a spec sheet for an Anderson 400. Correct. Yeah, that's what they're putting in in the addition. Right. But I believe the existing are Harvey Majesties that that Kim's record shows 05 replacement window, but not not the brand. I see. I see. But the, there is a it is a color. It's kind of that beige. I believe it, you know, it's, it, it is a Harvey Majesty. I, I apologize for not knowing that. I know when they went in. So th that, that's the only issue I have. Uh, Understand. Um, I think we could stipulate to match existing and then if there was something else that needed clarification, they could come back for an amendment. Sure. That would be a very good stipulation, which would cover both the commission and would also cover the applicant. So noted. Thank you, Vatsik. Anyone We just else? had the issue. I'm sorry, because you know, we just went through, of course, the Wilcox Street on those, you know, the grill grills between right. the glass and the, yeah. You know. Correct. Certainly, I, I guess that one of the things to make note of here is uh, at this point, I'll ask for the additional stipulation to be that the windows match the existing windows in all respects, including manufacture. Uh, is there a second for that? I'll second. Thank you, Mark. Um, the, the issue of whether or not Anderson 400 is a preferable window to uh, the Harvey Majesty is something that um, we all uh, can reflect on as we go forward. Um, but for now, if there are actually Harvey Majesty in the house, as uh, Mr. Lyons is suspecting, um, that's in essence what we're approving here, uh, even if the documentation includes a spec for Anderson, unless they want to come back to us and ask us to reconsider, um, in which case we can have a actual discussion about um, whether or not making a change for the back makes sense. Does that sound okay to everyone? Well, Doug? Yes. Uh, here. Uh, obviously, the back is not in question anyway because that's not visible from the street. The only issue that we really have are the three windows on the right-hand side of the property, which are visible. Uh, and, you know, keep in mind that you can spec manufacturers, you can spec product lines for all you know in the years that have elapsed between when those windows were put in and now things have changed. Uh, so if you simply stip that the windows should match the existing period, that covers you as far as color, that covers you as far as the paint out uh, layout. And if there's a minute little difference in profile between brand A or brand B or even brand A and brand A 10 years later, I doubt anybody will notice, including myself. This is Commissioner Ions. Is this the same Commissioner Vasek that sent out a tutorial on uh, window, <laughs> uh, window seminar? But I appreciate oh, yeah. those comments. Oh yeah, it's the same guy. <laughs> Much you know, great. What, once once you've gone down the dark side with replacement <laughs> windows. <laughs> well, 
I think that uh, I, I would say that make and model, if they still make it, is a pretty easy thing to replicate yep. uh, in terms of a purchase. Uh, and anything different than that comes back to us. But uh, And we just saw in the Marvin change the name of their windows that we believed uh, to be appropriate. Right. They, they, they are changing models. No, no doubt. It's a great addition. Nice project. It's just... Uh, you know, those three visible windows on the right hand side that uh, are visible from the front of the house, those are really are the only ones in question. So I'm ready for the vote. All right. So uh, with everything said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, please identify yourselves and say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulation. Finally, this is Douglas Martin, the project at 2 Fernwood Street, fencing. Is there, a, uh, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Second. Thank you, Jennifer. Any discussion needed here? We already did discuss during the meeting the issue of the gate. Uh, is that uh, something that we can consider um, as part of what was submitted, Jennifer? Yeah, I think because he stated it on the record that we're fine. All right. Thank you. Uh, any others, uh, commissioners, that uh, wish to speak to the issue of this motion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, please identify yourselves and say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Approval of minutes for May 12th. Is there a motion? I will move to approve as submitted for the purposes of discussion. Is there a second? Second, Lyons. Thank you, that's Chris Lyons. Our usual discussion at this point, which is that our thanks to our uh, reporter uh, Linda, for taking the time she does to reduce our uh, comments uh, and those of the public to writing. And also at this time, uh, I acknowledge the assistance, ample assistance of our historic district coordinator, especially uh, to uh, both of these town staff members for their efforts uh, during this uh, difficult time of uh, uh, sickness in the community. With all that said, all those in favor say, oh, first of all, who is voting on uh, the minutes? Doug, the Ken? only two were, there were um, Emily and Jen. Okay, thank you, Linda. You're welcome. So with all, and only those who can vote voting, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. And uh, those voting who can't vote uh, have done so. Uh, public comments on general matters of the historic district. Uh, Kim, do we have any reservations? None. Uh, no, other than the no. Let's <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll go just a bit further. Uh, when we get to that uh, piece, we'll move that out just a bit further. Uh, report of the Historic District Coordinator. None. Voting of officers. Uh, all of us are here except for one alternate. We can certainly move this to another night having uh, had a lengthy meeting. Is I there anyone that objects to that? I think we were uh, in agreement that we were gonna wait until June to do the officers and then give everybody a chance to chat about what they wanted to be. Like, I think that makes sense. At this point we are we have just two meetings left in this fiscal year, and there will be a uh, turnover um, of appointments anyway, and we could proceed with voting of officers in July. If there's anyone that has an objection to that, uh, please uh, so state or let us know. Otherwise, maybe uh, this won't appear on the agenda again until July. Application. That, you, want, you want it in June? You want it at the end of June or you want it at the beginning of July? Not until July after, is my suggestion, after the uh, fiscal year ends and the uh, 
appointments are finalized by council. If anyone has an objection to that, I don't mind staying on, but uh, we are getting so close to the end of this term, it may make sense not to have two elections uh, back to back. Uh, I think in, Fine. So noted. Thank you, Jennifer. If Again, if anyone wishes to state uh, uh, a preference for something else, you can always contact uh, us uh, in between meetings uh, to let us know uh, or contact Kim, who can then uh, come back to us. Finally, uh, correspondence. Is there any correspondence? No hearing, correspondence. Hearing none. I'll ask at this point if the uh, person that was uh, going to ask that we do an informal hearing at this point, if they are still here. Yes, I'm, I'm still here. This is Steve Caprio. Steve, thank you very much for taking the time to go through tonight's meeting with us. I know this has been a, a little bit longer meeting. We didn't start right away because of our technical difficulties, but we were able to get started due to the devotion of our town staff. At this point, we are approaching 10 o'clock, and uh, I don't know, Kim, if... Doug, oh, you went on mute. <laughs> unmute yourself. Oh, you're on mute. Mute. Okay, oh, I've unmuted myself. There you go. <laughs> I think so, let's have a, a really quick conversation, um, because I always appreciate when um, potential applicants come in in advance to talk to us about big projects. Um, we love that because it gives us a chance to talk in general terms about what they're proposing to do. And so I, you know, I did glance at the material that was provided to us so far. And you, know, you do have a lot of details about the inside and some drawings of the outside. Um, what we would be interested in in particular uh, for when you come in are very specifically because your house is very visible what the windows are going to be because you have some beautiful windows in the main body of the house yep. um, and then um, additionally spell out for us what all of the material will be for um, any new the stairs and railings and all of that as well and drawings exactly what they're going to look like if you have that for us I think for me um, in I would uh, you know like to hear some of the comments from some of the other commissioners. Usually on a addition like this, I like to see a little step in from the main body of the house so it doesn't end up looking like a railroad car style house when it wasn't meant to be originally. So it really speaks more as an addition, but I certainly would welcome my um, fellow commissioners comments on that. Well, that's an interesting uh, comment. Uh, Commissioner Wolf, uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Wolf's concern that some additions of that uh, of the type proposed here um, aren't necessarily the best choice in the after mode compared to before. Uh, I'll just note that uh, the current season of this old house uh, has a uh, bungalow that's been extended uh, where the they were, it was small enough when it began that they were able to make the house larger without it looking odd. I think that's maybe one of the factors here, uh, which is in the after state, if the house can take the additional length, um, then maybe it works. Uh, on the other hand, if it, if it can't, then the typical things we look for in addition which is um, that somewhat smaller stature uh, is something that may be worth considering. For this particular property, I will say I didn't drive by before the meeting tonight, so I do want to do that too. Um, it was just something that um, at the outset I noticed because it um, pretty much makes the front portion of the house before and after that bump out, which is probably the dining room or something, after that dump bump out the same size. So I, you know, I want, I do want to drive by and visualize it. But um, like I said, I do really appreciate the plans in advance and the homeowner coming in 
um, in advance to chat with us about it. Yeah, so if I can, um, hi, I'm Steve Caprio. I just uh, introduced myself. We are just moving to the neighborhood. Um, I do have a background in construction. I currently work for a hotel developer. So I also have a degree in landscape architecture. So I really appreciate the historical commissions. We have to deal with them a lot in my current job and in my past job. So appreciate what you guys do. So thank you for taking the time. Um, just to give you a little background, we, we thought about the addition in a, in a few ways. Um, we did think about coming in in the back, but with the way it was drawn and the way I think it masses better, keeping it the same 24 feet wide because it is not a super wide house um, and we're only adding 16 feet in the back. We do, after that bump out, you do end up with close to the same size as the front. However, you carry more mass with the front porch. And when you look at relatively with the length of the house versus the width, so the final length will be 44, final width of 24, that actually makes a pretty architecturally pleasant home. Um, we have plenty of room on the site. So as far as the mass, when you look at the total plot plan, um, it should fit really well. And it actually masses up better with the homes next to it from Google Earth. I sent that image. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're not trying to do anything crazy. We really want to make an investment in the community and the home itself because we plan on starting a family and we want to be here for a while. So. The house as it is now, it's great, it works, mm -hmm. it's just a little small. So we really wanted to add that extra size to the house, really get what we needed and stay there for a long time. That's great. Welcome to the neighborhood. It's Thank a, you. such a pretty house. It really is such a pretty house. You're gonna love living there. Thank you. I did have a question. Um, I looked into window specs a lot. It's probably taking me the most time. That's why I haven't gotten the application okay. until next week it'll go in. I've landed so far on a Genweld 2500 cladwood traditional. The reason being is the sashes actually match to almost like a quarter of an inch to what is existing. Um, so I think it's the best product. It's aluminum on the outside, still wood on the inside. I don't know if you all have experience or have, if that me saying that was like, a, oh, that's a terrible window. but. <laughs> Okay, uh, if I can pipe in here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as, far as, the, as far as the Genwell window, I mean, a clad window, there's a, a number of small details that a lot of manufacturers use on how the window is located in the wall, how the, tr the little bits of trim and how the screen uh, fits that sort of, can oftentimes make or break it. But that aside, and we can, we can work that out later, um, I'd like to step back to what Jen brought up was about the massing of the house and that. And uh, the thing that she mentioned caught my eye too was looking at the left elevation where you do have that small bay sticking out where the, um, I assume, dining room is. Uh, and now that's dead set in the middle of the house. What if you look at the building as it stands now, uh, there is this asymmetry to it, which is uh, accented by that bump on the side, but also by the very asymmetrical placement of the windows. However, with the addition, you have, on the left-hand elevation, you have two ver pairs of windows directly above each other that are identical in size. Have you played with the idea of possibly taking one of the downstairs windows and making it smaller, sort of like the one on the ups, upper, uh, on the second floor existing right now, which would sort of reflect that sort of almost playfulness uh, You've done that on the uh, right elevation where you have a small window. I assume that's on the addition already uh, on the first floor. Uh, just, yes, just I just saw what you're talking about. So um, I think one of the things that we could do pretty easily just based on the interior layout as well is we could almost mirror that tiny window on the second floor 
right next to, so if you were to go right yeah. to the left of the bump out, we could probably mirror that because that isn't a bathroom. Yep. So we could probably easily, I have no problem making that smaller if it, if it made the home look better in everybody's eyes. Right, so, so you have, a, you have a, the small window on the second floor sort of mirroring the bathroom on the first floor, right? Well, it would be, um, it would actually be that on the second floor, that's a bathroom with a penny window on the side of the house that's really visible. And so. Okay, I've got to reverse that. I'm looking at your floor plans backwards then. Oh, uh, no problem. Okay, yeah, that, that would be cool. Because then I see what you're saying. It would, it would kind of. It would, it would break up the very symmetrical back. And I could probably shift it over a little bit too. So Which is incongruous was. with the very asymmetrical front. Yep, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as breaking it up, I think if you drive around the district, you'll find a lot of houses that are of similar proportions as what you're proposing. So I don't think it will look that much out of scale. Uh, no, and I don't have a, a massing or scale issue um, either. It was just something that I was considering when I looked at the material quickly. Yep. It's really not something that would keep me from um, approving an application for an addition on this house. Yeah. Now I thought I, it's very well thought out, and uh, it's it's neat to see the thought process of some of these projects. Well, thank you. We, I tried, and I mean, I, it's important to us to make it look right. So mm -hmm. it took a decent amount of time. We went back and forth with the architect several times, and I, I like the idea with the window. Um, I'm going to talk to him, but he did just print me out sheets since it's due next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you can always go in there with a Sharpie like some people do. If, if you guys don't mind if maybe that window doesn't look quite right, but I get the message there in the submittal. I think so, yep. Okay. Another little question I had, and this is more about the submittal. Do you all actually need me to create you like a sketch rendering? Or are the elevations as they are fine? You know, there are cases where we definitely require um, renderings or streetscape views and drawings. I'm not sure that I in particular need them in this case. Um, you know, I'd like everybody else to weigh in on that too. Like I said, I am gonna drive by um, and to Vasek's point, I think the change, the window change, you could not um, have your architect redraw the drawings for you. I think you could make that change by hand. Okay. Because it's the idea to save yourself the cash on another set of drawings. <laughs> um, but I personally don't think a streetscape or a full rendering is necessary. What do other people think? I'm okay with elevations, preferably. I feel the same way as uh, the others who've spoken uh, because in part because we have the benefit of today's discussion. Okay, great. Um, I'm trying to think if there were any other, I will get those details on the steps. They're going to be very simple wooden steps pretty much to match the front, um, pretty much to match what's there now, but they're kind of falling over right now. So <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> I, I should just ask if uh, Emily, uh, Claire, uh, or Mark have any opinion regarding uh, renderings at this point, or if you think that you might be able to rest on uh, uh, elevations. Um, that would, if for some reason you feel differently about that, please get back to Kim uh, so that she can alert us to your feelings uh, um, being a, a bit different from what we heard already unless you want to say something now about it. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, Steve. Oh, no, no problem at all. And then if anybody else has any questions or concerns, like I'd love to hear them now. I'm grateful for you guys speaking right now because I really do want to get this done the best way possible. Um, Steve, this is Claire. Welcome Hi, Claire. to the neighborhood. I'm over on Main Street, not too far from you. Oh, um, great. I think for the application, um, if you could get, uh, one of the um, model windows, sometimes the contractors can bring in an actual window 
uh, and Kim could put it on her front porch and we could actually look at it. That can be really, really helpful, especially in a house like this where the existing windows are very pretty and we do want to make sure about them. Thank you. Yep, I will, I will give it my best. Um, I am doing this currently without a contractor thus far. Um, it's kind of twofold. I wanted to get the approval first and I'm sure you guys have experienced the, the world's a different place right now and construction pricing is luckily coming down. So I've been trying to hold off and I want to get them a complete packet to bid that's done and complete. Um, but I will do my best to see if I can get a gen weld sample window. I'm not positive, but if not, I have a whole spec book and I have the current measurements from my current windows. Um, but I'll do my best. Thank you. That's all we can ask. You're welcome. Hey, Claire, uh, if he's got a spec book and if it's got good details of the cuts through the window, both horizontal and vertical, that will give us a pretty good idea of what of those small details that there are or aren't in those windows. Well, honey, it might give you those small details, but like, <laughs> Mr. Windows. What I, um, what I can send you guys with it, Gen Weld, because this all happened, they have a virtual showroom that is in like a 3D tour that you can actually go in and see the window. Oh, cool. That's um, interesting. It would be a helpful alternative if I can't find a window. So I'll do my best, but I can always send Kim that link. That's great. Uh, I would just ask, the existing windows in the house are wood and painted? They are, yes. Okay. And um, the are, are you thinking that you would prefer to have siding? Uh, I assume that if you're going to go with the uh, current concept, you're talking about matching the siding all the way yes, back. We are. Okay, would there be a, um, if the current windows are painted, would you put some, be able to put some time into looking for, instead of a clad window, a, a, a modern manufactured wood window so that it could be painted to match the other windows? Since we're matching the siding, in other words, why not match the windows, at least in their color and um, general shape and and when I say color, you know, an aluminum clad window is not going to necessarily read the same as a painted wood window on the same wall. Gotcha. So um, we are going to repaint the windows and paint the window frames black, which should help. We're going to go full white on the home and then just the sash is painted black. That's good to, for us to know uh, because and, um, that tends Sorry. to be a more forgiving clad color. That's, that's what I was hoping. Um, and it is, a yeah, with the aluminum on the outside. Also, we're not replacing any of the other windows. We have those diamond windows, which we're not yeah. getting, trying to get rid of. <laughs> I wasn't even gonna try that. Um, but these don't have any grills whatsoever. So right. that helps too. It's, it's just the sash sure. and then the narrow sash on the side. Um, so I'll get you guys all that material. So hopefully it'll, You'll see that it is very, very similar, but that that color uh, that color choice accounts for a lot of the concern that I might have uh, in a white. So thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Are there any other commissioners that have questions for the applicant right now or potential applicant? And do you have anything else for us, sir? I'm all set, but um, if you guys have any other questions, I'd be happy to Great. try to answer. Great. I just want to thank uh, Commissioner Wolf who. Uh, indicated that she might have some reticence about our going forward. Uh, thank you for extending yourself, Jennifer. Uh, and you're right, we like to take advantage of uh, opportunities like this uh, to help move uh, applications in a direction uh, that works for everyone. I thank for everyone for their additional 15 minutes on this, uh, this evening. Uh, if you have further questions, sir, please, uh, direct them to Kim and she'll direct them to us if necessary in the meantime. And at this point, I will entertain a motion uh, to adjourn. Doug, uh, I have, uh, this is Commissioner Lyons. I do have some update on the applicant. Um, it's uh, 5 uh, 
the current owners responded. They were Eagle Windows replacements in 05, and they were bought out by Pella. So just for the, they were not Harvey Majesties. Oh, for 55 uh, Center Street? The Center Street, yeah. Just for the uh, okay. commissioner's information. I thought that Eagle was actually purchased by Anderson, but I could be wrong about that. In any event, what uh, uh, we'll leave that to Vasek. <laughs> uh, so okay. thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that additional information, um, sure. Chris. That's what and, I'm here for. And if no one else has any additional information <laughs> to share at this point, I will go back to a motion to adjourn. And who made that? The move, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. And second? I'll second. second. <laughs> we have lots of seconds. Uh, I'll let the second go to, uh, was that Mark? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. The meeting is adjourned with the thanks of the chair to all. Thank you, everyone. That Thank was you. Not bad at all for that Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you all.